you're tuned to the Urban Affairs Program. It's time to get up for Urban Perspectives with your host, Pete Rhodes. Welcome, you're watching Urban Perspectives. This edition is sponsored in part by the North Central Minority Supplier Development Council, Twin Cities Mobile Jazz Project, and BMANetworks.com. I'm your host, Pete Rhodes. On this episode, we talk to three leaders in the field of education, substance treatment, and business opportunities. Stay here for this enlightening look at personal and business development here on Urban Perspectives. My first guest brings decades of education and leadership experience encouraging others to teach and to lead. Her goal is to bring different, challenging, and rewarding opportunities to families, communities, and students in her position as principal of the Creative Arts Secondary School in St. Paul. Please welcome Dr. Valerie Littles Butler to Urban Perspectives. How are you doing, oh, Dr. Butler? Wonderful, thank you. We was talking off camera how you used to be a baller. Yeah, I'll take that used to. I still <laughs> think they can play a little bit, a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I feel you. So I'm so glad to have you here today. I've been hearing so much about you oh, and good. the school over there at the Creative uh, Arts. So I guess I'll start out by asking you the question, what is this Creative Arts uh, Secondary School and what is its mission? Oh, Creative Arts uh, Secondary School, actually, this is the very first year in St. Paul Public School history to have a K-12 alignment of arts. So uh -huh. our school starts with sixth grade, goes all the way through 12th grade. Mm -hmm. It's an articulation from the K-5, and we continue all the way until graduation and beyond. And our mission, actually, is to empower these young people to use their artic artistic uh, creativity to not only just shine in the school, mm. but shine in the community and have something to offer the world. Yeah, that's great. How important is it, we often hear about it, how important is arts in the development of successful students? It becomes uh, highly important for students that really shine, and that's their gift, mm -hmm. and that's their strength. And I love to operate in the strength of people. And if kids come in with working on their strengths, all their weaknesses will build up to their strengths. Yeah. And so when they come in the door, we find out, what is your passion? That's my question. What is your passion for arts? And then I start with there, mm -hmm. as well as their uh, gifted ability in academics. Now, some students may not be as strong in academics, but when they're working passionately on their arts. One thing about creative arts, we integrate the uh, arts into the curriculum and the content area, as well as the content into the art. So you're gonna get art all the way across the board. Mm. And so the kids are able to work in their gift and their artistic expression. So if they're in social studies, they're able to either draw it out act it out, sing it out, whatever they need to do. So I was going to ask you what kind of students uh, actually attend that. I would gather that that type of format is really popular. So you're getting everybody wanting to come possibly to the school. Yes, and a lot of students, this is brand new, so they're trying to feel their way through our program mm -hmm. as well as the new teachers are trying to feel their way through the new program. But the students are doing very well as far as allowing them to expose what they learn. And they may not be as gifted on a for, on the levels as some kids come in singing really, really good. Mm -hmm. And the other kids get a chance to see how they do that and work with these young people. And the kids actually work with each other. Oh. That's amazing. Yeah. And we also uh, have opportunity to work with community experts. Matter of fact, our, our, our teachers are experts. That's what they do for a living. Oh, that's great. And, you know, I was, I was going to suggest, uh, is it the same for teachers wanting to gravitate to your school, finding them and helping to create the create, uh, curriculum is uh, probably everybody uh, chimes in and does it together. That helps. That is key. And a lot of our teachers are multi-gifted. So mm -hmm. they teach maybe reading, but they sing and teach music. And some of the teachers that are artists, like they draw, visual artists, they also play instruments. Mm -hmm. And so we have, it helps them to understand the artistic mind and artistic thinking yeah. so that kids won't get chastised because they can't be still because they keep, they have a beat in their head. I got it, got it. So, so what's your history in St. Paul? You, you're, you're a local lady. And uh, so what's your history there in St. Paul and what brought you to the school? Actually, I have the. I was blessed to be born and raised in the Rondo Village, so uh, I had a plethora of pillars to help me indeed. and guide me along the way. And so I've actually been in education for like 28 years. Mm -hmm. I taught in Minneapolis. Now I'm in St. Paul, back at home. 
raised in the church, singing in the choir, mm -hmm. and just and then I married Sam Butler, and he's actually a guitarist. No and way! Singer. Now Sam Butler's your husband? Yes, yeah, my husband. Oh, Sam is so cool. I love that guy. Yes, he yeah, is. It's a small world. It's very small. Yeah, yeah. So together, he followed the passion of his father mm -hmm. and formed our family ministry, his musical family, and so all of us actually have performed in the gospel at Kelowna. So we've yes. taken it from singing to acting, and Sam is a musician, mm -hmm. and my son's a musician, and the people seeing me in the community and being able to connect with the community in an artistic way. I think that the, the superintendent and the cabinet had confidence in me to be able to do this. Obviously. So in the one minute that we have left or so, uh, Dr. Butler, what one ingredient, in your opinion, will assist you in becoming successful as well with the students uh, at the uh, Creative Arts Secondary School? One ingredient that covers it all, relationships. Mm. Relationships are the foundation of everything. It breaks down barriers of engagement. It breaks down barriers and leads to success. So when we learn from each other and have a great relationship, I see progress all the way around. Yeah, yeah. So you've seen so far great things happening over there. Oh, Amazing. It's yeah. fun. It's fun learning and yeah. growing. Yeah, well, we enjoyed having you here. And thank you so much for accepting the uh, opportunity to come in. And oh, thank say you. Say hello to uh, uh, Andre when you see him. First. Absolutely. That's right. my guy. Yeah, yes, sir. No doubt. No doubt. All right. So. Dr. Thank you. Butler, thanks again. Thank you. Weekly here on Urban Perspectives, we present Shining Stars, highlighting people, places, and events that contribute to the vibrancy of the urban community. Our Shining Star this week earned his bachelor's degree in finance and accounting at the age of 19. He is currently a law student at William Mitchell School of Law, and he believes that focus, hard work, and determination, anyone can achieve what they set out to. Meet our Shining Star, Mayor Abdul Salam. My name is Mayor Abdul Salam. I'm a student at William Mitchell College of Law. My family is originally from Eritrea, a small East African nation, um, but I was born in Saudi uh, Arabia. I went to Spring Lake Park High School. I was able to do some college classes during high school. Uh, I was actually able to finish all my generals uh, during that time and went to Augsburg. I did finance and accounting at, at Augsburg. I uh, completed it uh, in two years and graduated uh, when I was 19. Three months later, I got my CPA uh, and then went on to uh, William Mitchell, where I'm at now. My ultimate goal after law school um, is to work in some type of business law, corporate law environment, uh, specifically securities, tax, or mergers and acquisitions. I was raised primarily by a single father, um, so I think the, my support system was always there, whether that be family, friends, or uh, mentors, uh, and I think that's number, that was number one for me. Uh, when it comes to goals and missions, you know, I kind of see the people around me work pretty hard and they motivate me to do the same. Recently, we got appointed on the board of directors uh, of Youth Prize. They focus on students, particularly between middle and elementary school age students, and specifically the time they spent after school. Growing up, I, you know, recently I can remember being 13, 14. That time after school was really crucial in how I spent it. Um, I had, you know, parental supervision to kind of tell me, you know, read this, do this, and so forth, you know, finish your homework before dinner. And the nonprofit wants to kind of step in and fill gaps in the community where some kids might not have that. You have to work hard. That's a given. But outside of that, um, reach out to other people in the community, volunteer, look for uh, internship opportunities. Don't always look for the shiny, uh, most sought after opportunities. Look for the opportunities that require hard work that allow you to kind of expose yourself to the community and kind of show your value of what you can bring to the table. My name is Mayor Abdusalam and you're watching Urban Perspectives. Thank you, Mayor. Coming up, I speak with the founder of Turning Point, a residential treatment and support facility whose goal is to provide an extensive complement of services to influence long-term community health. Meet the founder, Dr. Peter Hayden, next on Urban Perspectives. Welcome back to Urban Perspectives. My next guest is a graduate of the University of Minnesota with a degree in psychology and a PhD from Richardson University in New York. He is a nationally and internationally known speaker and trainer on topics ranging from substance abuse, mental health, 
suicide prevention, and co-occurring co co disorders. Please welcome to Urban Perspectives, Dr. Peter Hayden. Good morning. How are Good you, Good morning. Peter? How are you doing? It's a pleasure. All right. Pleasure to have you here as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that you do there, man. Yeah. You've been doing such a great job in our community, and uh, we really appreciate having you here on the show. Well, thank you, and thank you for your service. Yeah, well, thank you. Turning Point has been successful, uh, Dr. Hayden, uh, in services in our community. What uh, has much of it to do with how effective, shall I say, has it been since you started it in 1997? Yeah, it, the awareness for chemical health, mental health, et cetera, and homeless also, mm -hmm. and HIV and AIDS, we do those four kinds of things, have just risen because anytime you have communication, you have someone to enlighten the community about the effects of, of um, misery. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. We're a misery management company. Yeah. And once we can enlighten people in that, it changes the community. Well, uh, churches are a vital part of the community information. In your opinion, how important are the faith-based initiatives to the support and what you do? Well, one of the things that started a long time ago was uh, AA. And the two guys that started AA ha knew the foundation had to be religion and church. Mm -hmm. For me, I feel so proud because I grew up in a church family. Yes. I grew up in a church community. And there's no way that you can stay sober if you don't have a higher power. Mm -hmm. For sure. Now, with suicide and chemical uh, issues rising, why is it important to have a culturally specific social and health uh, program such as Turning Point? The need for people to understand the bill or have the ability to understand that they're not just monolithic that they are there in an environment by th where things are going on mm -hmm. so when you look at suicide prevention you look at and you say well it's not me mm -hmm. that's what we've been saying mm -hmm. but if you can cushion the opportunity for people to say maybe I should look at some differences point in case in our community if someone does something strange they say oh he's just crazy mm -hmm. and play it off mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. we've come in and said no let's look at what craziness is and how we can support that to make our community a, a stronger community that's so fantastic now turning point recently created a partnership with North Memorial um, Hospital explain how it works right. for us you know, North Memorial is a mile and a half from Turning Point. A mile and a half. And we never have touched, talked to each other and things of this nature. But yet and still, they're getting our kinds of clients. Right. Clients coming to the hospital, mm -hmm. and they don't have a medical issue. They have a psychological issue. They have a chemical health issue, or they're homeless. Mm -hmm. And so in talking with them and sitting down with them, many of the things that they were losing money, on, and we were not getting the dollars mm -hmm. to help the people. We came together and said, how can we help the community? And the beauty of this, Peter, was the fact that we didn't look at ourselves. We looked at the people who we serve. Yeah, so it should turn out to be fantastic it's uh, fantastic. collaboration. Yeah, already it has. We've are we got some things that I hope you'll bring us on in terms of the walk-in clinic and some other things that we'll be doing we uh, do come that. November or so. we got to do that. Now, you have created uh, what is probably one of the nice new programs around the Twin Cities, the Turning Point Honors Program to recognize leaders in the community. Who have you recognized thus far and who's up next? Dr. Mahmoud el Karti was the first recipient. Mm -hmm. The second one was Judge Pam Alexander. Yeah. And I'm so excited about this third one, Dr. Frank Wilderson. Uh -huh. This is a giant in our community and he never left us in terms of being able to touch me and others, you know. And mm -hmm. then we're also recognizing Mr. David Goodlow, mm -hmm. uh, who was the first person I asked to join me at Turning Point. And lastly, our very first client, we're 39 years old come June. Yes. He will have 39 years of sobriety come September, wow. Mr. Bill Smith. Well, and we're excited about that. And we also ask that if you can call us, we would certainly sell you a table or an individual ticket and things of this nature. I know you'll be there yeah. and your wife because yeah. you have supporters us all the time. Yeah, well, we'll make sure that information's up and they can go and find out about it. And of course, we're going to talk more about it. What's that pen you got on there? Oh, man, I love it. And, you know, oh, you have one, one, too. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Monitors. In the 1955, a group of 
professional men said, we don't see each other, we don't talk to each other, we don't have a time to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And so they built this organization called the Monitors, and you can see it's almost 60 years old. Yeah. But the beauty of it is mm -hmm. that you get with people who you can talk with, who understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, you can have fun with them. Yeah, and we do so many things in the community that's uh, just fantastic, and that's what I'm civic a pleasure to be a part of it. And lastly, mm -hmm. um, if you would have one thing to say to that person, and in the 10 seconds that we have that is looking at you right now and has the need, what would you say? I would say, first of all, I am you. Mm. Secondly, I'd say give Turning Point a call at 520-9161. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we would uh, be able to help you. But I am you. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Peter Hayden, appreciate you so very much, man. Thank Thanks you. for being here. I appreciate it. All right. Coming up is an expert in communications, human resource development, and program management. Meet the new chair of North Central Supply Development Council, Hector Martinez, next on Urban Perspectives. Thank you for staying with us. My next guest has been recognized with numerous business awards and credited with establishing a strong alliance with corporations and entrepreneurs to achieve sustainable success. He is currently the Supplier Develop Diversity Manager at U.S. Bank and Chair for North Central Minority Development Council. Please welcome to Urban Perspectives, Hector Martinez. Hector, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you, Pete. How are you? I'm fine. We were looking at a number of photos that we had taken of the program as a member of myself over the years and constantly see you in all those photos. So you are going to be a great asset. I can tell to the uh, to the organization so thanks for coming well thank you yeah I'm really excited about everything that we've got going on with the council and all of the different initiatives and all our alignment with what the National Council is really giving us so yeah. it's uh, it's a really important it's a part time of for us. yeah yeah how did you choose business and finance as your career uh, move Hector yeah that's a really great question Pete I, I felt that you know when as I was growing up I kind of saw a need for me to be able to understand how to be able to work within the system here in the United States as far as like understanding how to uh, build credit, how to yeah. uh, educate other people about what they need to do to be able to succeed in life here. And mm -hmm. as you know, if you don't understand business and finance, it's pretty hard to, to get ahead in life. Yeah. And so I learned that very early on in, in my uh, education as I was going to school and I began to really uh, understand the workings, the inner workings of how the financial system worked mm -hmm. and how to be able to become successful within that. So as I began to educate myself, I really began to also educate others and that opportunity came around at an internship that I had where I was a, a call center representative for a financial institution. Yeah. And so as I began to understand how financing worked, I was able to explain to people what they needed to do to be able to get themselves out of debt. So it well, was something that really helped me really uh, build a platform for my for my future. future yeah. Speaking of which, uh, give us some of that expertise now. Uh, what do you think is the most important factor a small business must have to succeed? You know, I think the, one of the most important things to do is a plan, mm. you know be able to plan to put together a good strategy mm -hmm. and then communicate that. Um, in order for a business to be able to succeed, they need to have a plan that outlines what, who they are, what they're going to do, and how they'll be able to benefit uh, the community and uh, other uh, social aspects. So, and it's important for them to be realistic with their plan, I would gather, as well. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yes. And so that it's a working document. Mm -hmm. It's a plan that you have to continuously look at. And you know, as an old saying goes, if you if you plan to fail or if you fail to plan, you, you, you plan, plan to fail. fail. No doubt. So that's it's important to make yeah. sure that businesses take that on as they start and they grow and develop their organization. Yeah, key key point. Now you're over at U.S. Bank, and they've provided over six billion dollars in SBA lending to thousands of small businesses over right. the years. What are your goals as their new supplier diversity manager at U.S. Bank? You know, I, I really look at my role as being able to increase awareness internally and mm -hmm. externally mm -hmm. about what supplier diversity is. We build a lot of value into the organization by being able to bring diverse suppliers that mm -hmm. increase our ability to reach, um, you know, different uh, communities. Right. It also increases our 
uh, or it decreases our cost mm -hmm. because we have suppliers that actually come in and uh, build value by being able to do a job that maybe another incumbent supplier um, would be displaced and be able to do a better job mm -hmm. and at a cheaper cost. So how did you learn that, Hector? What is your approach to uh, creating successful alliances with corporations and minority vendors? You know, I, f I feel that m the alignment that I saw was being able to communicate the strategy. Mm. So understanding what the business need really was at hand and being able to really um, build programs that spoke to that really mm -hmm. is, I think, are a, a key and essential part to what you're doing. To what we're doing, yeah. 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 So now as the chair of uh, North Central Minority Supply Development Council, what's your goal to strengthen the organization, Hector? You know, my goal is right now is really is to build stability mm -hmm. uh, from a board level. Leadership starts from the top. Yeah. And so in order for us to be able to do that, I need to be able to have a board of directors that is engaged. Mm -hmm. I need to have a board of directors that ha understands uh, that we not only need to serve uh, the corporate members, but we also need to serve the minority business enterprises. Mm -hmm. And so as we begin to develop programs, I want to begin to develop things and uh, events and different uh, parts of that educate our MBEs, yeah. uh, educate corporate members, uh, and connect those two uh, to be able to develop uh, a better economic and vibrant community here in the Twin Cities. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to do a fantastic job, man. You've been around for a while. You've been in leadership for a while there. I'm looking forward to uh, being with you as you uh, move forward and strengthen this program. It's a great time for the NC MSDC. Perfect. Thank you very much, yeah, Pete. Hector, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Appreciate my pleasure. It. Thank you for watching Urban Perspectives. I would like to thank my sponsors, North Central Minority Development, uh, Supply Development Council, the Twin Cities Mobile Jazz Project, and BMANetworks.com. My guests, Dr. Valerie Littles Butler, Dr. Peter Hayden, and Hector Martinez. Our shining star, Mayor Abdusalam, and you, the audience for Getting Up with Urban Perspectives. Visit our website at urbanperspectives.tv for information on our guests and where you can find links to previous broadcasts and you can help us grow by liking our Facebook page. Remember, there are positive things happening in our cities. See them right here on Urban Perspectives. Now enjoy the photos of the week as we salute this special day, celebration of faith. I'm Pete Rhodes, see you next week.